Once again, good morning, Eastport Bible Church. We are so glad that you are with us live this morning via Facebook. Uh, This is absolutely, I keep going back to this couple of words, unprecedented times. We are live streaming our Sunday morning worship service this morning. Who would have thought that April 2020, there'd be nobody in the pews but yet you'd be sitting in your homes and your couches, uh, maybe in your pajamas, watching worship, worshiping with us, hearing from God's word this morning. Wherever you are, literally we have people I'm sure all over the world, we are glad that you are with us during this, these challenging days. And our prayer here is that we at Eastport Bible Church, we are here for you. We care deeply about what you are going through. We are praying for you. We know that we have some of us who are sick, some of us who are really struggling, some of us who are without jobs right now, some of us who are bosses and trying to figure out what the next step is for your company, for your organization, whatever that is. It's hard. It is hard times, and we're all just kind of waiting and trying to figure this out. But it is so reassuring, and it is so good that we, though we can't physically be in the same room, we can absolutely connect, and we need to connect. And I challenge us as Eastport Bible Church, keep connecting, keep encouraging one another, P- keep picking up a phone and calling one another, sending a text message. We need to connect, we need each other, and we certainly, most of all, need to keep encouraging each other to connect in our relationship with God. And so we can't be together, but we can connect and we need to connect. And so please, please, please keep doing that. Again, unprecedented times. Um, My son Christian and I decided we would go to Costco uh, to pick up some groceries and some necessities last week. And so this was, I think, my second time out in public to like a normal store doing a normal thing that you would ordinarily do and not think twice about. And so we decided uh, to gear up. Uh, We decided that we would not only protect ourselves but also try to bring some joy to people in the midst of what is really kind of a tough, joyless time for a lot of us. And so we decided, after some brainstorming, what we do to cover ourselves and to uh, have some fun with it in a situation that's not really fun at all, we decided to wear motorcycle helmets, full motorcycle helmets, with shield and all. And so here is the photo of my son and I with these motorcycle helmets literally walking around Costco like nothing is wrong, like this is just totally normal. And the crazy thing that cemented to me how unprecedented this situation is, is nobody, nobody responded, nobody reacted, nobody looked at us and said, what are these clowns doing? Why are they wearing motorcycle helmets? They just walk by like, eh, just two people protecting themselves, no big deal. Uh, it is unprecedented times. It is a different sort of situation that we are walking through. Here's my son in his motorcycle helmet, you know, just buying bananas, pushing his Costco cart, no big deal. So these are uh, challenging days, unprecedented times. Just keep going back to that phrase. But there is the scriptures that no matter what we are walking through, no matter how normal, routine, or unprecedented it might be, this book, this word of God, God's word can be so uh, reassuring, so helpful, so full of hope in the midst of difficulty. And so this morning, uh, we're going to talk through John chapter 11. I'd love for you, if you're in your homes, grab a Bible Use your phone, whatever. We're going to stay in this passage pretty much the whole time. So you can just stay right there in John chapter 11. But this is really quite uh, maybe the pinnacle miracle of Jesus' ministry. This is in John, he records quite a few miracles. And this is kind of the last miracle in a stream of miracles that the author John records in this gospel of John. And so John chapter 11, verse 1. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, 
was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped uh, his feet and her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And so Jesus had these friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were three siblings. And he had spent some time with them and developed a connection, a relationship. He was friends with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And so Jesus catches word that his friend, his dear friend, Lazarus, is sick. And he hears this, and he's trying to figure out, he's making plans for when he is going to go see his friends, when he is going to see about his sick friend, Lazarus. And it says in verse 6, he stayed where he was two more days. And so we think of, like, Jesus in this situation, this is his friend. Why wouldn't he respond to him right away? It's time. Jesus, you got to go. It's your friend. It's an emergency. You got to go see Lazarus. But it said he waited two more days. He heard news Lazarus was sick, but he waited two days. For some of us, this situation just seems like an eternal wait. We're just waiting and waiting and waiting. It seems like our whole lives have been on slow motion for the last week, two weeks, three weeks. Things have been shut down. Life has been postponed. Things have been canceled. And we're just waiting and waiting. And one of the things that's been so hard for me, and I'm sure it's been hard for you, is wondering, when's this going to end? When is this going to be over? The indefiniteness of this situation has been so difficult for so many of us. Yet in this situation, Lazarus, he was sick and Jesus, who this is his friend, it says that he, he waited two days. He waited. I'm reminded of teaching my kids when they were really young to ride a bicycle. And they'd go around and ride the bicycle and we'd be right here in the church parking lot and they'd be riding and riding and riding and get in and get in. And finally, one of them would slow motion fall over. And you could just imagine the situation as a parent Right away, you want to respond. There's no sense of waiting. You just go pick them up, help them, encourage them. Let them know right away it's going to be okay. Dust yourself off. Keep going. You got this. You got this. And sure enough, my kids, with a little encouragement and their resilience, they just kept going and going and figured it out and learned how to ride a bicycle with all the scars and bruises and all that came along the way. In this situation, we feel like that little kid with the bicycle and we're just wavering around and we're falling on the ground waiting and nothing is happening. No one is coming, it seems. We're just waiting and we want it to stop and our businesses are relying and our jobs are relying on our loved ones who are sick or may end up getting sick. Maybe ourselves, we're in this process of waiting and waiting and it's really, really difficult and really hard, but yet there's something so profound that Jesus didn't just run to Lazarus' assistance. He waited. He waited. Two days. He waited. It's like, I got stuff to do here, but I'm going to go, but I'm going to wait two days. And so let's pick up how this story continues. Let's skip to verse 17 of John chapter 11. On his arrival... Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And notice that he waited two days, but when he arrives, finally, Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days, which means what? Lazarus died four days ago. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, 
If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Notice these words. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Martha asked what I think is an incredibly normal question, a human question, a question that I probably would have asked Jesus, a question that you probably would have asked Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If, I, if you would have come, Jesus, he wouldn't have died. Why didn't you come sooner? But then she says, but I even know now God will give you whatever you ask. And then they have this little dialogue back and forth. And, and Martha is, takes from Jesus' words that, that Lazarus one day, when the resurrection ultimately happens for us all, that Lazarus will rise again. But Jesus clarifies, no, 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 no. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am so excited about Easter this year. Pastor Caleb and I were talking. Easter could not come at a better time this year. The, even the, the word, the thought, the idea, the concept of resurrection seems so beautiful and so brilliant right now. The power of the resurrection that we will rise out of this situation. That there is hope in the resurrection. There is victory in the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, our Savior. The one who came and gave up his life for us. The one who ultimately rose from the dead, conquering death once and for all. He is the resurrection and the life. He is there for us no matter what we are walking through. No matter what that pit in our stomach is right now, no matter what the anxiety is that we are going through, no matter what fears, no matter what worries Jesus proclaims, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will have life. That is for me, and I'm sure for you, for all of us this morning, provides so much hope and so much encouragement. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Skipping a couple of verses ahead, verse 32. When Mary, the other sister, reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. The same comments that Martha made. Jesus, if you had just come, if you had just been here, why did you wait is kind of loaded into that question. Jesus, we needed you now. Why didn't you come? Why did you wait? Why did you hesitate? The stuff you had going, I'm sure, was important, but really was it more important than this. And of course, I'm just adding Words here, I'm adding my own commentary to this, but I'm sure these thoughts were circling both in Martha and Mary. Jesus, if you had just come, my brother wouldn't be in the tomb for the last four days. Jesus, why didn't you come? And then it says, when Jesus saw her weeping, and notice her, her comment to Jesus was loaded with weeping and sorrow. It says, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And in verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. The amazing thing that I find about this is that Jesus was really deeply sad. Sad 
to the point of weeping. Many of us, maybe these past couple weeks, we've wept. (laughs) Maybe we've gone through a situation where you're just, there's nothing I can do right now but weep. Uh, Maybe for some of us, we've experienced that in the past, and we know what that deep sorrow, that weeping feels like. It's nothing that we want to ever experience. But here's Jesus, and something I find remarkable is Jesus knew how this story was going to go. Jesus knew. He even said earlier in John 11, he knew that he was going to rise Lazarus. He knew he was going to heal him. He knew that Lazarus would die and that he would raise Lazarus back to life. He knew that. He said it to his disciples. He inferred it to Martha. He knew the end of this story. But yet Jesus wept. He wept. He was sad in his heart and his soul. He wept. He cried out. Both in his sorrow and in his love for Lazarus, he was deeply sad. And so for us, I think one of the things that we really can't do and shouldn't do in the midst of this time that we're going through is just hold in our sorrows, hold in our fears, hold in our worries. Let it out. Own the loss. Acknowledge it. We, uh, last week, last Sunday night, we had our boys' small group we met. Uh, for youth group, we met on Zoom, so it was all virtual. We were all in our own places, and uh, we just had a chance to go around kind of the virtual room and ask, what have you lost? And it was really, really hard, teenage boys hearing the significant things in their life that they've lost and having them call it out. I lost my school. I lost being with my friends. I lost sports. I lost graduation possibly. I lost a big part of my senior year. I lost maybe prom or junior prom. I lost this. I lost that. I lost all of these things. For you, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe you've lost health. Maybe for you, you've lost stability. Maybe you've lost finances. You've lost all of these things. Maybe, God forbid, you've lost a loved one in the midst of all of this. It's really hard and it's really sad. But I think the first step to healing and the first step to growing in the midst of this is to do exactly what Jesus did, is to weep, to acknowledge, I've lost this. To write it out, I've lost these things. To acknowledge this has been really hard, and this is what I've lost. And I think it's going to be really, really healthy for us to say it because the opposite of not acknowledging it is just to keep it in, and it just pents up, and it just wells up in us. And then it comes out in anger. It comes out in other things if we don't properly process the things that we lost. And so Jesus rushing or walking to the tomb to go see where Lazarus was buried, it says that he wept. And then in verse 36, it says, Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Skipping to 38, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time there is a bad odor, for he has been in there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? I'm going to read that again. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen, And a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. And so Jesus, (laughs) he calls out, 
Lazarus, come out. And he walked out. I can't even imagine what this scene must have looked like. Lazarus, who's been dead at least four days, we know that he was in the tomb there for four days. And he comes walking out. And uh, kind of the horrifyingness of this scene is that he walks out in these grave clothes. Presumably, he was embalmed. He had all these things. I mean, it's like zombie apocalypse type situation. He walks out all embalmed. And, and Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And he walks out and he is alive. And then he says, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Let him go. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. And so he came out alive. They take it off. And Lazarus, he goes. Things have been changed forever for him. He went from life to death and back to life. What an incredible miracle. Only Jesus could perform this sort of miracle. In fact, we, we see in a little bit here the momentum of this miracle is what really propelled the Jews to really speed up what they would ultimately do to Jesus. This was a miracle of miracles. And so it's incredible, though, that he says to Lazarus, Lazarus, you've been healed, go. And so for us, I think it's really, really important that we have experienced these losses. We've experienced a lot of difficulty. Maybe we are weeping those losses. But Jesus doesn't say to Lazarus, come out of the tomb, take off your grave clothes, and just have pity for what you went through. He says, Lazarus, take off the grave clothes and go. And grow. And so for us, we need to know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the resurrection and the life We have somebody who is there for us no matter what we are going through, no matter what we are walking through. There is resurrection through Jesus. There is hope through Jesus. There is comfort and peace and joy in the midst of everything that you are walking through because Jesus is the Son of God. He is the one. He is the resurrection and the life. And so for us this morning... I encourage you, when you see these words, loss, grow, what is it that stands out? Am I more just focused on the loss? I think we need to acknowledge the loss, but we can't stay there. We need to grow. And I keep just circling back to this. And we've talked about it a lot through our different communications here at Eastport Bible Church. This is a really tough time. This is a tough time for us as a church. This is a tough time for us as individuals. This is a tough time for our community. This is a tough time for our nation. This is a tough time for our world. The globe is walking through the same thing at the same time. But I keep going back to the incredible truth that in the midst of this difficulty, there is amazing opportunity. There is chances to grow. There's chances that we can just get lost in our loss and we can dwell in our self-pity and our sadness and the things that we've lost or we can process those and we can work through those and we can heal those and we can turn those into opportunity to grow. And we can acknowledge that the thing that's going to help us to grow is that we have God who is there to comfort us and to help us and to give us joy and peace in the midst of everything that we are walking through. We can absolutely grow. And so something I'm going to put out on our Facebook page is I'm going to send out a PDF with just a chart that's just going to give all of us an opportunity to acknowledge the things that we've lost and how that makes us feel and what that is to go through that and how we heal and then grow in the midst of that. And so I really, really encourage you, print out this sheet, write it out. No matter how young or old you are, this is a great opportunity. Kids, teenagers, adults, grandparents, whatever you, wherever you are, you have lost and you need to heal and we need to grow and we need to see the opportunities in the midst of this. And so I challenge you to print out one of those sheets and uh, go ahead and fill that out. But I'm going to pray for us. We're going to end with a worship song and we are so glad that you joined us this morning here 
uh, at, well, online at East Four Bible Church. Let's pray together this morning. God, I thank you. I thank you that you are present with us always. We can't be present together, but you are always present with us. No matter where in this community we are right now, no matter where around the world we are right now, you are with us, you are present, and we thank you for that. God, I pray for my friends who are going through loss right now. They're dealing with health issues. They're dealing with job security challenges, dealing with questions of finance, dealing with friends, family who may be sick, dealing with loss of normal routines and schedule, dealing with loss of school, sports. Everything, Lord, has been changed. And there is deep loss. And there is this wondering for all of us, when's this going to end? When's this going to stop? But Lord, yet when Lazarus, Mary, Martha, Lazarus were in crisis, you waited two days. And so Lord, maybe in the midst of our waiting, that's where we need to be for us truly, really to grow. And so Lord, I pray that in our waiting and in our sorrow and our loss, in our weeping in maybe some cases, Lord, we can grow. And we can really, 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 instead of trying to solve this ourselves and come up with answers to these questions on our own, Lord, we hand this over to you because, Lord, you, your son, is the resurrection and the life. And there is so much hope in that this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, oh, you are my portion, that you are my hiding place, oh, I believe you are the way, the truth. The life I believe you are the rare, the truth, the life I believe through every blessing, through every promise, through every breath I take. I believe that you are provided. Oh, you are my portion. You are the one I love. I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way. True and the life I believe you are. It's a new horizon, and I'm set on you, and you meet me here today. The mercies that are new All my fears and doubts They can all come to Because they can't stay long When I'm here with you It's a new horizon And I'm set on you And you meet me here today The mercies that are new All my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long. And I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, the 
life I believe you are It's a new horizon And I'm set on you And you meet me here today Mercies that are new All my fears and doubts And they can all come to Because they can't stay long And I believe you are The way The truth And the life I believe you are The way And the truth actually is Palm Sunday. And the amazing thing about the story we just read in John 11 is it leans right in to what is about to happen. In fact, this is quite amazing. In John chapter 12, verse 9, it says, Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. And then it says, the next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your King is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. May we be encouraged this morning, on this Palm Sunday, that our King has come. (laughs) Our King came and He is here with us. Our King is here, and He is the resurrection and the life. No matter what we are going through, our King Jesus is here, and we can be incredibly encouraged by that. And so this is a meaningful week here at Eastport Bible Church, and we are really excited. It is going to be so different this year, but Palm Sunday is today, and um, we are just going to keep you apprised on what is happening. We retooled our website Uh, go to eastportbiblechurch.com, and that's going to be kind of a a main hub to find out what all is going on. You can connect with our past videos and announcements, our Sunday stream. Our Facebook group is kind of going to be the best channel of communication for us to go back and forth. Any questions, prayer requests you might have, please jump on there, and we want and we need to connect with each other, and so please use that. Also, Here's a way to get our text updates. This is also really helpful to just find out the latest information as we communicate and just find out what uh, is new and next. And there might be uh, some live streaming stuff that pops up that we wouldn't have ordinarily planned. That's just a cue that it is happening. And so please jump in on that. Text that number, this message. Uh, We'd love for you to be on there to get our latest communications. Also, online giving. Um, If you are a regular giver here at Eastport Bible Church, maybe you are just wondering, how do I do that? I'm not here. I don't have the ability to do that. We do have online giving, eastportbiblechurch.com. And again, that is just for our regular giver. If you're sitting there going, I want to give, but I don't know how to give, this is a way to do that. And uh, we'd love for you to uh, be a part of that if God so leads you to be a part of that. Also, please, as individuals, as families, we now have time. One of the things that we can't say and shouldn't say these days is, I'm too busy. We're not, and we have time. And one of the things that we can really do is spend time with God. An individual Bible study, time with family Bible study together, devotions, whatever that might look like. We really encourage you to take those opportunities to do that. Also, Good Friday. Um, Palm Sunday, as mentioned, is today. Good Friday is This coming Friday, Easter is Sunday. We are really, really excited about worshiping together through uh, Facebook Live. 
uh, Friday. Our live stream service will be at 7 p.m. Uh, we will announce that on Facebook. We'll also send out a text reminder. But uh, please plan on joining us. It's going to be really good. Josh Tuttle is going to be leading us Friday night. We're really looking forward to um, getting led to the cross and experiencing the cross uh, through what Jesus went through on Friday. And then, of course, the resurrection. On Sunday, we uh, encourage you and welcome you to join us Sunday at 10 a.m. as we celebrate resurrection. I don't know about you, but I am really, really looking forward to that. We need uh, some resurrection uh, today and these days. So, um, Eastmore Bible Church, we love you. We're praying for you. Please let us know if there's any way we can help. Um, That's it. See ya.